Welcome to the Metal Collector. This video will be about 20 of those albums that got me into hard rock and heavy metal. Stay tuned. Welcome YouTube to the Metal Collector once again. It's been a while since the last video and uh, I've been very busy with some other stuff. Um, also attending a lot of uh, metal concert and festivals. Uh, saw Guns N' Roses the other day, uh, the other, um, Iron Maiden uh, the day uh, before. And attending Heavy Aga, um, great little Danish festival. Uh, watching a lot of great bands. So I've been very busy for the last month, but uh, yeah, I'll try and do some more videos, I promise. This video, like I said in the intro, will be about 20 of those very important albums to me uh, where I discovered hard rock and heavy metal and got me into that universe. And it's very popular. I've seen uh, more of you guys uh, from uh, the collector's community uh, doing these uh videos so i thought why not i'll try making one as well so and those these 20 albums i have gathered here are some of the most important and there are plenty of other albums as well but just to take 20 of them instead i could have picked perhaps 50 60 albums that had a huge impact on me but these 20 definitely had big importance Enough babbling, let's get down to business. Now, a little uh, intro story. When I was a kid, I wasn't that much into music. I listened to uh, the songs from the movies I, I saw and, and themes, especially from Western movies, uh, old Danish movies, songs. And um, it, you know, it wasn't actually until my grandparents bought me a stereo that I started uh, buying music. So the day after I got the stereo I ran out and bought some albums and a lot of varied stuff <coughs> one of those one of those albums were a rock uh, collection of, of different artists from the beginning of the 90s and one of those bands were Guns N' Roses and the song You Could Be Mine so when I heard that I was just blown away that song did it for me I re-listened it countless of times and uh, just fell in love with that song i could every note every line the solo the drum patterns everything within a couple of uh, hours i think just <laughs> listen to it constantly so the day after i ran out uh, to the local record store and i bought these two albums new solution one and two and holy hell i had found my favorite band and it still is to this day not just for nostalgia reasons but also a little bit but especially because this band what they released it, it was not unfortunately not that many albums back then but it was enough for me i bought these uh lies and i ordered home appetite for destruction which became my favorite album i, I heard that and it was just like okay that is the best album ever I, i've i've never heard anything that can that can beat Appetite. I, I, I don't think I'll ever find an album that can beat it. But these two albums had a very huge impact on me. And after listening to these, I had to know more. I had to get my hands and ears into more from that department of rock and roll. So I ran out uh, down to the library uh, at our school, at my school. And I bought, not bought, I rented a book uh, about hard rock and heavy metal bands and it was very good it was uh can't remember the name but it was a book that that uh, mentioned members uh, uh, the album discography and and everything so there was a lot of important info in this book and one of the first bands that i really uh stumbled upon uh many times in that book were acdc so i ran out and i bought highway to hell and I'm very glad this album was the first one I bought because this is just, this is a masterpiece from the rock, hard rock department. I still love it. This is my favorite album with ACDC. 10 out of 10. Uh, and I started collecting all the rest of the stuff. In, uh, in the house, uh, 
where I lived with my mother and big sister, we had also MTV at that time. And up till this point, I didn't have that much interest in what they were playing. But I, when I discovered this type of music, I started paying attention to some of the lists that were, there was a lot of pop stuff. And my big sister, she was into techno and dance music and that sort of stuff. And uh, my mother was into actually disco from the 70s and the beginning of the 80s and Jimi Hendrix, Beatles, Kings, Cream, that sort of stuff also with the rock. So she had both and I was just into this uh, hard rock kind of stuff. So one of the first band that I uh, discovered here on MTV was, of course, Metallica. And I've heard their names, uh, the name uh, before, but I never really... Uh, like I said, knew, knew much about that sort of music. So the Black Album was a big hit back then, and they were still playing Enter Sandman, Sad But True, and all the hits from, from the Black Album. And I think that was actually my first Metallic album. That was the Black Album. But it was not the most important one. The most important one was Master of Puppets. This album, I bought it, and I heard Battery. It was just, okay, are these the guys that did Into Sandman? And, and I love this album. It's not my favorite Metallic album. Uh, Kill Em All and Ride the Lightning, those two are every day fighting against each other to be my favorite album. But this is definitely also a very, very high on my list. I, I love this album. So I started, of course, buying Metallica stuff. And soon after that, discovering... Uh, Metallica, I stumbled upon Megadeth, so I bought Peace Sells But Who's Buying, the greatest album from that band. Um, the title track, when I heard that the first time, I remember it was Goosebumps, it was just, okay, this is good. And yeah, I started collecting Megadeth as well. At school, I had a friend that also were into hard rock and metal music, and uh, we started borrowing CDs from each other. And I borrowed Iron Maiden's Number of the Beast from him. And Run to the Hills did it for me. I was a fan immediately. This is a classic one. Of course it is. So I started collecting Iron Maiden. Great album. And, um, yeah, let's take this one. When... Reading about a lot of articles in magazines, I start buying music magazines and still reading this big book of, of rock and metal bands. Uh, also, soon I stumble upon Motley Crue uh, because I read about Guns N' Roses and their fight with Motley Crue at that time. So, Theater of Pain was the first album I bought with this band. I don't know if it's my favorite album with Motley Crue, but it's very close. I love this album, and uh, not just for nostalgic reasons. I think it's unfairly overlooked. Uh, speaking of the first five classic Motley Crue albums, people always tend to forget this one. It's only known for Home Sweet Home, and I think that's a damn shame, because you have uh, Louder Than Hell, Keep Your Eye on the Money, uh, Tonight We Need a Lover, Use It or Lose It, Fight for Your Rights, Raise Your Hands to Rock. This is a great rock album so i also became a fan of motley crew pretty soon after that and in denmark at that time we had a rock band that it seemed to uh, gather both people from the rock camp and people from the more mainstream music camp it was uh, this band could gather all kinds of people that was dad or disneyland after dark as they were known for back then this album is No Fear Left for the Pilgrims, the third full length. And this is a, a classic Danish rock album. I think a lot of you out there also know this album. Um, <coughs> it has so many. Sleeping My Day Away, the most famous track from the band is, is the opening song here. And all of the songs are actually classic ones, more or less. So this album, it's... I think after the album Help Your Selfish, that were the most metal sounding album they did, they started uh, evolving into a more, uh, not mainstream act, but yeah, a little bit, and a softer sound, and I was not a big fan. The next album, Simpatico, had some okay songs, but the album after, I think it was entitled Everything Glow, 
Everything Glow or Everything Glows or something. Uh, that's the last album I bought with them. I think there were one or two songs on that I liked. So I stopped collecting with DAD. I still think I've, I've seen them live and they still kick uh, ass live. But I think the music is a little bit too soft for my taste today. Uh, staying in Denmark. I also borrowed this from a friend in school. Pretty Mates, Future World. And one of the greatest Danish old heavy metal albums. I also, you know, everybody loves Red Hot and Heavy as well. And the first EP is just amazing uh, too. But this album, it, it's so fulfilled. It's, it's, it's also, I know this is where they try to make it big time and all the songs are very much written so they can give you, uh, they, all the songs have some hooks. Uh, but it is a good album. And the title track, one of the greatest heavy metal tracks ever written. And speaking of heavy metal classics, I read an interview with James Hetfield um, in a music magazine back then, and he was mentioning the 10 albums, 10 of his favorite albums or something like that. And this was one of them, Judas Priest, British Steel. So I bought this one a couple of days later, and <laughs> what's to say, it's, it's a great album. Uh, just uh, Breaking the Law, Listening to that song, that was just holy, holy hell. That did it for me. I was a big fan of the band immediately, and I started collecting all the stuff. So, uh, also in the same article with James Hetfield, he also mentioned this album, the most important album within the metal story ever, Black Sabbath's debut album. And when I heard this, I. I'll admit, I, I didn't know what to think of it because it was so uh, dark, it was heavy, and the whole, the sound from the 70s, the production is great, but back then, a young kid discovering this album, uh, it was just holy, holy hell. And I I fell in love immediately also with Black Sabbath, started collecting those uh, uh, albums from when Ozzy was uh, being a part, and when I heard... Um, uh, uh, heaven and hell it was just holy shit man that probably my favorite black sabbath album but it, I, I have some problems you know if i had to pick one black sabbath album this could easily be it because of uh it, it's a great album but also the importance of this album but if i had to find the most fulfilled tony iomi uh written album that would probably be heaven and hell and dio's vocals are just amazing on that but anyway if that's not it's not here to debate about Black Sabbath. Screw it. Um, but staying in the same vein, Ozzy, Bug at the Moon. I remember I had read about the madman Ozzy Osbourne also in the books I had uh, borrowed and uh, articles and stuff like that. And my big sister, she was being a member of a um, movie collector's society or something like that. So she got this catalog every month uh together with one of the movies. And in this catalog, there were also uh, CDs and Bug at the Moon. I, you know, I saw this and I was just, uh, okay, what is that? Okay, that is, okay, that is Ozzy Osbourne. I need to get my hands into that album. So I uh, got her to order this for me and um, the greatest Ozzy Osbourne album. Ozzy Osbourne album, in my opinion. I think what Jake Lee does on this album is just as good as what Randy Rhodes did on the first two. So, I love this album. And again, I say that, actually, I think I have some nostalgic reasons for this because about favorite albums, because this is another one. The first album is, it has something over it. But I, I, it is a good album. So I started collecting Ozzy and, and Sabbath, like I said. Uh, I had a friend that, also, uh, we played a lot of Super Nintendo uh, at that time, and he was also into this type of music, and he had a soft spot for Pantera. So he introduced me to that band, and I ran out and bought Cowboys from Hell. Again, not so much to say. It's a classic one. It, it, it you know, all the, the title track, Primal Concrete Sledge. Um, Cemetery Gates, of course, Domination, The Art of Shredding. This is a great album. I can't, uh, I've always debated with 
whether this is the greatest album or Volga Display of Power is the greatest Pantera album. I've listened to both of them countless of times. And, yeah, I don't know. Both of the albums are great. It's like a brother and sister album. It's like Load and Reload uh, sort of stuff. But um, another guy played a tape for me with some different kind of music. And suddenly there was one specific song that I just... Uh, it gave me goosebumps right away. The first time I heard it, and I said, what, what is that? And he said, well, that is Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven. I said, okay. So I ran out and bought the album where Stairway to Heaven was on. And holy shit. The, the, that is one of the greatest songs ever. I had one of those songs you have heard like a million times. And it still gives me the chills listening to it. Listening uh, to it today. I, I try to keep it down so I don't uh, listen to the, to the song that much uh, because I'm afraid to grow tired of it one one day and I don't want to do that because it's a fantastic song so once in a while I put it on and it still gives me goosebumps and the rest of the album is also just amazing black uh, dog rock and roll the battle of evermore just <laughs> the first four songs with you know ending with stairway to heaven and uh, going to California when the leaves breaks one of the best 70s album albums but I had started uh, to evolve uh, a love for thrash metal also at this time, also for heavy metal, but um, I wanted to know more about thrash metal. So um, Anthrax was one of the first bands that uh, came up and I bought Among the Living. Also a classic one, <laughs> I know, but that was uh, the albums I went after at that time. I read about them, I bought them. And I, I remember actually I wasn't that... Uh, happy for this album to begin with because I thought Belladonna's vocals there was something about it that annoyed me but I kept listening to the album uh, it was great music and suddenly Belladonna's vocals just they grew and today I'm I love his vocals I think it's great he's back in Anthrax also I really much enjoy Fistful of Metal with um, Neil Turpin's vocals I think the Bush area it's not my favorite part of the Anthrax story. Let's just say that. But this album, this with Spreading the Disease, my two favorite albums, but this is probably just a little bit better than Spreading. Love both albums. Now, let's go back to Denmark. I also, uh, you know, I started digging down uh, to all this metal bands and and hard rock and i just found new bands all the time old bands but i found n names i didn't knew and one of those were a danish artist called of course king diamond and i ran out i needed to buy something so i ran out and this was the only album they had in the local record store that day i came there so i bought fatal portrait the debut album and his vocals the style you know um I hadn't heard anything like that and the whole vibe about this was just very dark and mysterious and um, there was something about it. I, I I had to listen to it a couple of times before it, it really uh, went in there but when it did it was just like okay I'm a fan. Dressed in White was probably the first song that I really fell in love with. But the rest, the candle, the Joan, the portrait, uh, Halloween, the lake, the whole album is just great. And I ran out and I bought Abigail and them, the, I think, a couple of weeks later on. And, and this one, I also bought it, Merciful Fate, Melissa. I've been listening to uh, Fatal Portrait for a couple of weeks. And when I bought this, I had, you know, I, his vocal styles were, I knew them, but, but I knew the, the vocal styles. But the music with Denner and Sherman playing here, uh, the production, the title track itself, one of the greatest epic songs ever. It was just like, okay, give me more from Merciful Fate and King Diamond. I love that stuff to this day. So back to thrash metal, I kept digging. And of course you can't say thrash metal without saying Slayer. So 
the most famous album they uh, had uh, released uh, at that time was Rain and Blood, and luckily that was what they had in the local record store, so I bought Rain and Blood. And this is... This was probably the hardest and most aggressive album I had bought at that time. Uh, the production was cold and, and raw, and um, the speed of this music and, and Tom Rice vocals just shouting, it was... This was just, okay, now we're talking business. This is serious stuff. And I started to uh, grow more into that. So soon afterwards, I fell upon Sepultura. I, I read about the band and I didn't know anything about the music. I just read, especially Pantera and, and Sepultura was everywhere at that time, speaking of metal. So I ran out and I bought Arise. Like I said, I didn't know what to expect. I brought it home, put it on the stereo, and after the boom, boom, when when the drums kicks in and the da, 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 that riff and it just explodes into something I, I didn't know what what the hell was going on. This is at that time the most brutal shit I had ever heard, and I couldn't understand anything of it. It went so fast and the vocals and were brutal. Everything was brutal about this. This is my first meeting with. The more extreme stuff today, you can find easily find stuff that is way more uh, aggressive than this one. Also from before uh, ninety one, um, but again, this album. So when I had to give this many spins, but I did. I, I, I was very much. I said this is very interesting stuff, but I don't get it. And when I got it, it was just like more. I need more. And then serious. Uh, I started my journey down that road for extreme metal music. And the last album here was my first meeting with death metal, and that became Deicide's Once Upon the Cross. It's the most heavy shit I've ever heard at that time. And Glenn Benson's vocals, and the whole story I had read about the band, and the inverted cross in the forehead and all that, it was just like, this is evil, this is, <laughs> this is just beating the shit out of everyone and and I actually enjoyed this the first time I heard I could hear I could hear the groove Deicide is still my favorite death metal band because I love the uh, the groove of the band and the riff uh, the whole vibe about it this is just great death metal and this album especially again perhaps nostalgic reasons but it is a great album I also bought Legion and the debut album shortly after and I Stumble upon Obituary and Morbid Angel and Cannibal Corpse and that sort. So I started my road also down the death metal and kept on the thrash metal and still collecting hard rock and and heavy metal and speed metal came in and power metal and all that. And I, you know, the whole journey where you start by listening to the first band that will be the musical awakeness from that point up till now we have just taken this journey and and you're interested in the next stuff and and you're discovering grindcore and holy shit this is really brutal and black metal um i think the black metal uh, the first black metal band i or black metal band but the first band within that genre i um i heard about was cradle of filth because th those guys were becoming a name at that time and uh, one of the more famous ones so I think it was Dusk and Her Embrace. I heard it uh, on a compilation CD f uh, over at a friend's place. And <clears throat> I needed to know more about this genre as well. So I started uh, digging down to the black metal, uh, Mayhem, Dark Throne, Immortal, um, that stuff, the classic stuff. And also like that, uh, Doom Metal, I had a friend that was a huge Madang Bride fan, he introduced me to to the Doom Metal uh, genre and Saturnus came along and I, Candlemas and, and then you discovered old bands again and new bands and, and it was just the whole journey, it was amazing, it's, it is amazing, it was amazing. So. Yeah, but anyway, I'm babbling here uh, with some nostalgic glasses on. Thank you for watching this video. These were 20 of those albums that really had a huge impact on me and my music awakeness for and passion 
for hard rock and metal music. Thank you for watching and see you again in the next video. Stay metal.